Welcome to this video where today we'll talk about using SOLIDWORKS if you've never touched it before. If you can get your way around the menus in SOLIDWORKS and just need some help constraining and sketching and dimensioning, you can find that video here. Or see the description for any tutorial that you might be in need of. Now, if the first thing that you want to do when you open up SOLIDWORKS is see the screen. You can either open a new document or you can open an existing document. Um, there's also some tutorials that you're able to uh, go by. Now, when I was teaching myself SOLIDWORKS, I used those tutorials, but I didn't have very much luck. It was uh, hard for me to understand, but a lot of people have uh, said that they're great tutorials and it would be a good resource to give a try. For my case, I'm going to click right here to open a new document, and you're given three options. SOLIDWORKS does three different things. You can make a part, which is an individual component of an assembly, this is a part that I designed as an example. This is a piston that goes in the straight six that I designed. You can see it's just one thing with a lot of features. It has supports and fillets and different curvatures, but it's one individual thing that you can put in a CNC machine and you can make it off of this, um, off of this design. Now the next thing is an assembly. Um, an assembly is a bunch of parts working together. This is a straight six that I designed for my class. You can see those pistons that I just showed you. There's six of them here. And that's a really good example right there of my uh, graphics card not keeping up. But regardless, all these assemblies can break down into their individual parts, like so. Now, the third option that uh, SOLIDWORKS gives us is a drawing. And a drawing. Um, works off of parts and assemblies. This is an example of the drawing that I made on my straight six. And here's like the drawings on the pistons. The purpose of a drawing is to be able to dimension and constrain and get all of your parts to be able to uh, be manufactured. And anyone should be able to look at these drawings and without ever seeing the part before, be able to make that part from scratch. Ask how good your uh, dimensions and things need to be for a drawing. But for our purposes today, we're just going to focus on part. So I'll start to make a new part. This is the screen that you see when you go to make a new part. Now, as an engineer, you're obviously concerned with units. You want to make sure that you're working in standard or metric or what have you. So down here, you have IPS. That stands for inch, pound, second. And if you want to work in metric, it's a quick way to change your units for millimeter, gram, second, or any other unit that you would really need for SOLIDWORKS. Now you have a few toolbars up here, and I would like to simplify these because when I first started doing SOLIDWORKS myself, they confused the heck out of me. First you have your features menu. This is where you add your fillets, and you can make extrusions and add other features, but we'll go over that in another video. Here you have your sketch menu, and this is what allows you to create parts from scratch and to create features from scratch. Uh, this will be the menu that we will focus on in our next video when we start making parts. Finally, you have the evaluate, and this has things like measure. You can even do some strength testing. You can try to flow things, like uh, you could simulate a flow of a manifold. That's getting a little bit more advanced, but we can get there one of these days. Finally, you have uh, these guys down here, and this is your history tree. This keeps track of everything that you do in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, for your purposes, all you need to do is focus on having sketch and this little 3D part, and that's what we'll start off with. Uh, over here can, can change some configurations and views, and these two you don't even have to worry about right now. We'll get to that some other time. But these are some of the basic toolbars that you'll find in SOLIDWORKS, and with this knowledge you should be about ready to start making parts. Tune in for my next video, you can find that right here. If you like my efforts to uh, help you out, please click the subscribe button and that's what helps me out. I'd appreciate it very much, and I'll see you next time.